Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome to this edition of the news on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, the traditional ruler of the Bamenju people in the worst region of the Republic of Cameroon, His Royal Majesty Jean Ramo Soko Jusis. Cameroonians will not accept any undemocratic transfer of power at the helm of the state. He made a statement and urged all Cameroonians to remain calm because he said the Bauba is falling. We'll have greater details on that in this edition of the news. And John Donatus, the former mayor of Kumbu, and the minister delegate at the Ministry of Economic Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tasson, are uh, continuing with the mission to the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon, intended to pave the way for the reconstruction of parts of the two Anglophone regions destroyed by the four year long. Anglophone crisis, and he says it's going to be possible despite the unstable social, political, and security situation in that part of the country. Stay with us. Reconstruction will take place. Reconstruction has to take place in the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon, says the Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Economic Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tasson, who is on a mission to the northwest and southwest regions of the country. He and his collaborator, former mayor of Kumbu and John Donatos, are currently in the southwest region of the country, meeting with administrative, uh, traditional, and even religious authorities discussing uh, the way forward in the reconstruction of villages destroyed by the Anglophone crisis, which has been pulling on for close to four years today, and speaking to the people of the southwest uh, region today, John uh, Donatos, or rather Paul Tasson, who is spearheading uh, that uh, project, said that reconstruction will be possible despite the uh, unstable socio-political and security situation of the two regions. And he says it is going to be possible because the objective of reconstruction is to fast track the return to peace and normalcy in those parts of the country. And he's going to be there for uh, the next uh, one week to meet with authorities in order to find a way forward in the reconstruction plan of the President of the Republic, uh, Paul Pierre. And uh, in the meantime, gun battles continue between separatist fighters and elements of the national armed forces in the two Anglophone regions of the country as the top military officials in those uh, two uh, regions continue with efforts to bridge the gap between the population and the military, the commander of the second military uh, region in the southwest region of the country, Colonel Eba Eba Benoit, told the people of Eshobi that his mission is to protect them on its way to that part of the southwest region and other areas badly hit by the Anglophone crisis. This is convoy came under stiff separatist attacks. Derry Jato reports. A region at war and a military commander on the field to see things for himself. General Eba Eba Benoit, the commander of the second military region, is in the southwest region and he is accompanied by General Tonka Elias of the second Gendarmerie region. From Boya, his first stop point was at Ijiki. Today the question is not what happened in Ijiki but rather what has not happened in this gateway to Kumba. Ijiki has seen all in terms of destructions and killings. The marks left behind speaks for themselves. And Kennelly Yenga Severin, the commander of the 21st Motorized Infantry Brigade is pointing the facts on the ground to his hierarchy of what happened where and when. This is Kumba. The town famous for respecting Monday ghost towns in the southwest region. And at the senior divisional officer's office for Mehmet Division, Tundong Chamberlain, the SDO for the said division, told these two generals that the consistent energy flowing from Mato from the separatists is highly responsible for the instability of Kumba. 
In other words, control matter and the Monday ghost towns in Kumba will die a natural death. At the 21st support battalion, names like Kusala, Ikumbe and Kake were mentioned, but the pace of things along this Kumba Manfi route is being removed by the separatist fighters of Ikiliwindi. And this is Ikiliwindi. There's always a price to be paid here, and some have done so with their lives. Kunye too has its own stories. Most security posts here have been destroyed. Right, we are here in Ngoti subdivision. It is a subdivision under Kumpe Maningoba division. And at each stop, General Eba Eba Benoit must have seen that vegetation is growing on perforated walls of most buildings, especially along the road. After Mavi Central Town, his arrival at Ishobi village was full of emotions. Their son and mayor of Mavi Council, Ojong Prinsley Ojong, was murdered here along this road. My heart is full of emotion. I give people to stand for one minute to pay tribute to let Mayor Presley. A moment of silence in his memory. Thank you. As challenges, then the generous message. May you let them know that we didn't come to kill anybody. We came to protect only those who refuse this protection and who would like to arm the peaceful population will have to confront us. And accompany the generous message of hope was a consignment of food stuff and COVID-19 kit. The Buya Kuma and the Kuma Mavi corridors have some dead spot and other areas have indications of life as people could be seen going about their daily activities. And signs of newborn babies were also noticeable. But most of these kids will grow up without their fathers. Many of them died as the result of the war. And if the same ideology that sent their parents to their early graves lives in them, then the end of their parents might have just been the end of the beginning not the beginning of the end of this anglophone crisis but the goal of the Cameroon government is to see these children grow up to be good citizens patriotic for a one nation Cameroon Coming up, Smanjik and Gabriel takes a look at efforts to restore peace in anglophone Cameroon notably in the town of Kumba in the Meme Division southwest region of Cameroon Kumba is one of the towns in Meme Division that has been crippled by the Anglophone crisis for several years now. Burning of public and private places, kidnapping and asking for ransoms, and the ghost town phenomenon has affected its inhabitants negatively. It is within this context that a peace walk took place from the city council premises to the amusement park on Sunday. At the amusement park, an ecumenical service held through which the clergy prayed for peace to return to the one time peaceful town of Kumba. The high point of the event was the official presentation of Mfo Mukete Fot Ekoko to the Kumba population as the paramount ruler of the Bafos. The exercise was done by him for V.E. Mukete. I'm seeing that uh, my son Koko is quite serious. He's doing it. And I thank him for that. It's a great example. He's already done the lot. I have many children. Yes. But I, I know my children. It was not a very difficult thing for me to do. Because actually in life, these, these things happen. They turn like that and go and fall to where they belong. My son, a coco, uh, to whom I've handed showers, knows the palace very well. He does everything, he did everything, he did everything. He's already uh, familiar with the place. After the call for peace to return to Kumba, many inhabitants are hoping that the days ahead will be quiet and things will return to normalcy. 
and one of the giant state companies in Anglophone Cameroon suffering today as a result of the Anglophone crisis and other problems affecting the enterprise is Pamol Plantations Public Limited a Company and the general manager says that the company has been striving to survive as a result of the impact of the Anglophone crisis. It's becoming very difficult for the company to meet up with some of its responsibilities and carry on with its activities. Take a listen to the general manager of Pamo Plantations. Thank you. There are many, very many. First, as I, as I told you, uh, we have, uh, we produce, the little we produce, we cannot sell, there's no road. We have people who have been out, everybody is eager to go back to work, we cannot go because those, the pockets of those, pockets of resistance everywhere, uh, both in uh, the outskirts of Mundemba and uh, outskirts of Ekundu Titi. I would, I would tell you that the army has done, the government has done so much to have uh, sent a uh, huge containment of, of uh, soldiers to be able to uh, fight these terrorists. These terrorists. And uh, we're, happy about, we're happy for that and uh, we will take quite good advantage of that to make sure that uh, we do more to be able to uh, stand the challenges which are ahead of us. That was the general manager of Pamo Plantations, His Majesty Mekanya Okon Charles, speaking to the inside. And he also indicated that the company is suffering because of uh, many that was meant to be dispersed to the company, uh, which is blocked at the level of the Ministry of Economy Planning and Regional Development. We'll tell you more about this in Talking Point. Time for us to go over to Limbe, still in the southwest region of the country where the people are suffering uh, the consequences of heavy downpour and floods hitting the opaque city. And uh, correspondent Davidson Maimo, Faris in details. Despite effort from the Limbe City Council to free the gutters from debris, clear and widen the stream with the use of caterpillars, the three days heavy downpour that battered the city witnessed an overflow of runoff and the stream overflowing its banks submerging some of the neighborhoods in water. The inundated neighborhoods such as Down Beach, Manga Williams Avenue, Bonjo, just to mention by these few, some inhabitants apportioned blame to the poor drainage patterns in Limbe. The drainage here, the gutters are very small now. So if there is a possibility for us having a bigger drainage system, it will be better. Others opined that the haphazard nature in the construction of houses provoked the flooding. A big play water, not go for water. It go bang now, they come back, they suffer innocent people. Mm. The whole yesterday, it is today, no one sees that place. The neighborhood of the first deputy mayor of the Limbe One Council, Motombi Henry, was also hit by the flood. To him, solving the flood in Limbe is much more bigger than the Limbe City Council. The investment level is higher than what the budget of the councils can carry. We need government intervention, we need World Bank assistance like they do in other towns, Douala and, and Yaoundé, to effect a better canalization and bring most of the streams through Dregi to their original levels. It is just the first rains and denizens in flood-prone areas are breezing up, expecting the worst in the days ahead as it is more of a yearly tradition in Limbe that some neighborhoods must suffer from flood. The paramount ruler of the Bamenju people in the west region of Cameroon, His Royal Majesty Jean Ramos Sokoju Chenjo II, says Cameroonians will not accept any undemocratic transfer of power at the helm of the state. He urged Cameroonians to remain calm because, he says, the Baoba is falling. What he means by the Baoba in this report, compiled by Fomi Armstrong Sanda. His Majesty Jean Ramo Sokoju, paramount ruler of Bamenjun in the Upper Plateau Division, West Region of Cameroon, before warning against any attempt to transfer power in Cameroon, paints a bleak picture of the country. 
a frustrating picture of what, according to him, caused by selfish interests, power greed and the misuse of public funds, has turned the cradles of our fathers into a shame. That is the nation Cameroon. In his reflection published on his Facebook page, Sunday, June the 28, 2020, Sokuju Jean Ramos sees a regime characterized by mediocrity, a regime full of spoilers and not fixers, a regime that sacrifices its children for power, and a regime unable to listen to its people. Jean Ramos Sokuju sees a poorly structured, fragmented, and an egocentric opposition in Cameroon. The Cameroonian civil society, according to him, is that which eats from both sides, a civil society unable to join hands to form a formidable force against individuals who got up the tree and wickedly pulled the ladder upward, stopping others from climbing. The traditional ruler sees thousands of jobless youth maintained in hopelessness by a system which, according to him, takes delight in making young people useless. He sees a widespread falling moral standard with sacrilegious acts when children will leave the corpse of their father in a mortuary to settle scores in a court. Sokoju Jean Ramo asked if it were not better he went blind from seeing what he sees about Cameroon today or deaf from hearing what he hears about the country today. After the bleak picture, the custodian of the tradition of the Bamanju people and the one who speaks with his ancestors says Cameroonians should smile because the big tree, the tree he calls the Baobab, is about falling. Sokoju Jean Ramo says people are not foolish and will not accept any November 82 in Cameroon again. Roughly translated from French language, he said a fool on a way and return should ask that his coffin be made. After the above reflection, the traditional ruler said Cameroonians, especially youth, should not give in to bloodshed, given that enough blood was already being shed in the northwest and southwest regions. To every citizen, the traditional ruler asked a self-retrospection on what they have done for a better Cameroon and what legacy they will wish to leave. He asked the youth to avoid being manipulated by the very individuals whom, according to him, are responsible for their suffering. He believes intellectuals should be the pillars of the renaissance of Cameroon, while citizens assemble their buckets of water to put off the flames in a burning Cameroon. Many inhabitants of uh, Kaeli in the Mayukani Division, far north region of the Republic of Cameroon, are still not respecting anti-COVID-19 measures of government, despite the sensitization uh, engaged by authorities in that part of the country. Many are still seen moving around without the face mask. Many still do not respect the physical distancing rule. Many uh, do not wash their hands as frequently as recommended by the World Health Organization. Makuli Fugger reports. Following government's relaxation of some COVID-19 lockdown measures in Cameroon so as to ease the negative economic impact of the pandemic on the population, especially on business persons, civil persons tend to believe that the coronavirus does not exist, thus no need to apply the barrier measures taken by the government of Cameroon. This is a case of Kaili in the Mayo Kanai Division, far north region of Cameroon. Several persons in the area could be seen going along with their business activities without wearing face masks. I know that the coronavirus does not exist in Cameroon. The government just wants to receive aid from developed countries. We do not need face masks. The virus does not exist. Since there is no one implementing the wearing of face mask, I just think it is not necessary for me to do so. Many accuse the Kaili Council for not supporting the population adequately in the fight against COVID-19. Hygiene kits were distributed to the population by the head of state, but we did not witness enough sensitization campaigns done by the government. The council was supposed to share hygiene kits to households, but they did not do their work. 
the access to wash hands with water and soap, but a few buckets shared by the council do not have taps on them. So, several persons have to wash their hands in the same bucket. With 94 COVID-19 cases and six deaths registered, elites of Kaili decided to sound the alarm bell by calling on the population to be vigilant and know that the coronavirus is real. They equally provided 5,000 face masks, 100 mobile taps and cartons of soap to the population. This is the contribution of elites in the fight against COVID-19 in Kaili. Many of them are living in precarious conditions. Despite the sensitization campaigns carried out, they do not have the means to acquire the necessary items, reason why we decided to carry out this gesture. Je salue le geste des élites que je voudrais d'ailleurs encourager et surtout much needs to be done to block the way of the coronavirus in the Mayo Kanai division as a lot of people in the area ignore the dangers of the coronavirus. Cameroon's Minister of Housing and Urban Development has given a 15-day deadline to contractors who have poorly executed some construction works in the Konsamba in the Mongo Division littoral region of the country until December to those who have abandoned the uh, projects to completely to completely execute the different uh, projects and uh, Celestine Kechakotes was speaking in Konsamba after visiting or inspecting some road projects in that part of the country. Smanjik and Gabriel report. Several road projects in Konsamba of the Mongo division have been left undone or poorly constructed. This forced the Minister of Housing and Urban Development to the town recently to formally warn those contractors who have poorly done their work or abandon them. These are projects to ameliorate the life of Cameroonians. You accept it having the means to carry out the work. And when you come, you do little. Some of the contractors were very open to the Minister of Housing and Urban Development that no means has been allocated for them to do the work. It's a project that had no finance. I started working here since 2019. I did what I could do and discovered the project had no funding. I'm reassured now that there is a line of finance. At the end of the visit, Celestine Kechakotes gave 15 days to those contractors who have poorly done their work to return to their site and those who have abandoned work to deliver them by December 2020. Talking Point is up next. Our guest Padia Sangai, civil society leader, is joining us from Germany. You're welcome, sir. Yes, uh, Babila, thank you very much for bringing me once more on to share my own opinions and the opinions of the silent majority back home and the uh, opinions of the silent majority in the diaspora who think that uh, we need peace and we Cameroonians should come together and fight the system and not fighting Cameroonians. Thank you, and thank you very much for bringing me on board. Cameroonians should come together and fight the system and not fighting uh, Camero other Cameroonians. Can you expand a little more on that? I didn't get your question. Come again, please. You said Cameroonians should come together and fight the system and not, and not other Cameroonians. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes, uh, Mr. Babila, you want to understand that we have a congenital problem that has to do with uh, the foundation of our nation, which is uh, the form of the state. And some people have taken it upon themselves, working with people within the regime of Mr. Bia, working with people within uh, in the diaspora, to make money, to make blood money, 
out of the blood of our young boys and girls who are dying at the Open Front. They are those people who will tell you that they will fight to the last man standing. You see them in swimming pools, you see them uh, in nightclubs in Western world, you see them in nightclubs in Cameroon. But they don't really care because for them, the crisis is a business. It's a breadbasket, it's a money making machine. So we think that instead of us fighting and killing those young boys and girls who are in the bushes, we should fight the system that is made up of uh, Anglophone and Francophone Jacobites hiding in Yaoundé and hiding in the diaspora, begging the white boys to come and liberate us. No, that is not the spirit of uh, Felix Roland Mouni. That is not the spirit of Ines Wanji. That is not the spirit of Nidhi. That is not the spirit of John Fonta. It is not the spirit of Frunji. It is not the spirit of Mama Ariel those people who rally together around the union for change and voted for a candidate. That is where, where we should have our focus and not killing ourselves. Mm. All right. Paji Asanga, um, the Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tassan, is in the Southwest region with his collaborator, former Mayor of Kumbunjang, Donatus, and they are spearheading efforts to pave the way forward for the reconstruction of uh, villages that have been burned down or parts of the two Anglophone regions destroyed by the crisis. And today, responding to the question as to whether it's going to be possible to reconstruct without the return of peace, he said, it will be possible because the objective of reconstructing is to fast track the return of peace in those two regions. What do you think about this? Uh, Mr. Babila, we are in a very dicey situation. We are in a situation where uh, a crisis has become a breadbasket for many people. For people within the regime of Mr. Viana, for people who are living here in the diaspora, they will tell you, I will fight to the last man standing, but you will not see them on the ground, you will never see them on the field. They will sit in Yaoundé, they will sit in Douala, they will sit in all the things that they have been saying. But you know, the crisis and the war, as some people want to call it, is circumscribed in very in some specific region and uh, in specific localities. You want to understand that in the northwest region it is circumscribed to 40 percent, and in the southwest region it is 20 percent. This is because there are people who know and who know who are making money out of it, and if they lose their political relevance, they will lose their political careers. Don't expect everybody, don't expect every community to accept uh, it is a good step, but it is not enough. And we think that the government of Mr. Bia, the Jacobites in Yaoundé, people like Atangan Chipor, people of bad faith who said there were, there were no Anglophone problems should come to their senses and do something do something very substantial that will ease this process. Yes, we want reconstruction. Yes, we want, want peace. But you want to understand that uh, if somebody who had never had any political relevance, somebody who has sat in the just as for a signing document, and suddenly this. This discover that people think more terrible to ahead us. If reconstruction starts, that means it is, it is, it is a pathway to not so they would not accept that. But the idea of uh, reconstruction, it is a very, very brilliant idea. And and we want to say people are criticizing that it is France. If France starts paying us from our colonial debts, from all what they call les accords secret for what they call uh, le compte de l'opération, for all what we have been banking and saving in France, we should take it and still hang on their name. It is but, step by step. It is the way forward. That's how we should be dealing with it.
because Padre people Asanga. don't use the arms that some people want to uh, uh, hypothek or want to mortgage our national resources or our natural resources for us to be killing ourselves. That is what I'm here to tell you, that we need reconstruction and certain communities where people have embraced peace, we should go ahead and serve as an example for other communities who are still greatest. It is a way of good faith and I would never, I would never uh, uh, discourage any community for, 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 for accepting uh, uh, reconciliation. Thank you, Mr. Bani. But dear Senga, from what you're saying, we can deduce that, in your opinion, uh, reconstruction is very necessary, is very important, and it is possible in this present context. So I'm going to ask you, what is required? What is required for this project to uh, be effectively executed across the two regions, not only in some parts, but across the two regions? What is required from those who are carrying guns, fighting the population, the government authorities, and all other stakeholders? Uh, every Indian community in the Northwest and Southwest region has specific revendication. They have specific objectives. They have specific goals. They have uh, specific reasons why they are fighting against the, the government of Cameroon. And that is will take you to people like Manchu BBC, who are not supposed to be in prison, who came out and said, we have the coffin revolution. We want to vote. We want our uh, cities. We don't want elected uh, governors. We don't want. Uh, we don't want appointed governors. We don't want uh, government delegates who would come and impose on us. That's just to tell you that there are people who want uh, political positions, and there are people who really want to change the life of the people to make life easy to get roads, to get schools, to get hospitals. And, and to get facilities like water, electricity, just like you saw the 17 boys out of the bushes, we brought out of the bushes, they were tell, telling you that they wanted electricity, a road that will help them take their market to the markets. That is the reality on the field, and these communities can go ahead, and that might be a signal. And if the government is serious, they should go ahead, identify these communities, and send a signal to those other communities who are still keeping the people who think that they are going to get, get independence from uh, the, the international community, which has said you no. Know, they are going to get international independence from from the uh, United Nations, which has said you know, they are, were supported by Nigeria. Nigeria who arrested. Uh, I, I used to say Kutabo and sent to uh, Cameroon that they are going to get independence with Ayub Sekutabe, who we think that he should be released and that he should go about doing his normal teaching job as a professor in the university. You want to understand where I am coming from, snake by snake. I have listened to audios. I have been talking to my brothers in the diaspora. They have castigated Tassan, called him a traitor. You have two camps in Nigeria, in, 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 uh, in Konengi. You have Naira 9 and you have Naira 1. Naira 1 is who? It is Tassan Wilfred. Tassan Wilfred is who? He is a member of the consortium. And they have vertically castigated him and put him aside. The diaspora, what have they done? They have vertically vomited and said, are you double is it, uh, a, a dictator? They have pastors in the diaspora who are praying that Ayutabe should be killed, that Ayutabe should never come out, and they are celebrating the fact that Ayutabe is sentenced for life jail. That is not the way forward. And the government should do everything to show good faith, to show the Anglophones who voted by vote to become Cameroonians that they, are, they have recognized that, yes, they were marginalized. Yes, there is a problem. And that problem can be solved step by step because there is no magic stick. If they declare a federation today, I don't think that tomorrow there will be roads in Pamenda and water or electricity. There will be no electricity cuts. So we are saying that. We want the spatial status to be loaded, and, and the content is very, very important for us. We are still 
putting and hanging on the neck of putting pressure and hanging on the neck of uh, the Cameroon government to give us a reasonable context of what we call the spatial status. What is the reasonable content that we expect that our the content the, the, the content has uh, already been uh, defined. Content. The content has already been defined, Padia Sanga. What do you mean by reasonable content? What is not reasonable about the content that has uh, been the defined content already? Has already been, the content has already been defined, and the content is not constitutional. We, uh, you want to understand that uh, uh, francophones do not family uh, 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 case or Basa people, as I heard uh, Monsieur Baybeck say, that they have to want their own federation. They, can, they never voted to be part of Cameroon. And uh, if we are special, we are special because we voted to be part of Cameroon and we came in with institutions. Some of these institutions and our structural development project should be ignited and they should be constitutional to those that can be ignited within the ambit of the constitution of Cameroon or, or the laws of Cameroon should be done. Like the Limbe did before, like they mentioned, uh, like they mentioned for. Uh, a hydroelectricity project. We want all those projects because they would create different Ukraine and our boys and girls would drop their guns. They would have a hope. They will have a perspective. They will have a future. Somebody can go and know that tomorrow at uh, the uh, the uh, the hydroelectricity project until retirement. You don't need to go to Yaoundé. We don't need to go to Douala. We don't need to leave the the North West and South West region do have retirement documents. No, we want to have our own uh, uh, institutions with within the region. If the Francophones keep their post colonial identity that makes them Francophone, we Anglophones should also consume ours and people should start stop telling us about Bamike power, Basa power, Bami power, and all sorts of nonsense. It's Padia Sanga is um the, the, all right from a global perspective now uh, the traditional ruler of the Bamenju people is Royal Majesty Jean Ramo Sokoju Chenju the second says Cameroonians cannot accept any undemocratic transfer of power at the helm of the state any transfer from one individual to the other as it occurred uh, with Aijo and uh, President Paul Beer, uh, though it was constitutional, uh, uh, it was constitutional at the time. What do you think about this? What's your take on that? Yes, uh, it, it is. It is. It is his right. It is his right to say that they don't want any undemocratic transfer of power. But uh, the paradox is that. They accepted that uh, uh, undemocratic transfer of power when it had a, it was, the power was not transferred to somebody who came of who is of the Anglophone instruction. We can concede that to him as as a tra traditional. He wants us to go back to our uh, our 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 our, our idea identities as as smart dogs, chief dogs, and what existed before the Francophones or the English came in. But if there is going to be a, a constitutional transfer trans, trans, of power that will, will uh, amend the constitution, make a vice president, put the post of a vice, vice president and appoint an Anglophone, will accept it. And uh, uh, it would be fair. It would be just this to the Anglophone. A sign of which it would be a sign of humility to tell the Cameroon right, um, that to send the signal that that, that, that that yes, we recognize that. All right, Padia Sanga, uh, thank you, just, thank you for. This has, has been been done at Pia and Anijo, and then we can move on from there after. All right, Padia Sanga, thank you for joining us today. Uh, live from Germany. We're sorry for the poor connection there.
Coming up next in part two of Talking Point, I told you that we will tell you more about the financial problem between Palm Oil Plantations PLC and the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, about two billion francs CFA that is supposed to have been dispersed to the Palm Oil Plantation to carry on with its uh, activities and to pay some of its uh, debts has not been dispersed today despite instructions from the Prime Ministry and from the presidency of the republic according to the general manager of Amor plantations his majesty chief mekanya okon charles take a listen to him he spoke to the inside the challenges are paying wages for the workers who are currently working the few who are currently working who are keeping the company afloat now that those who are working in the Indian mill and the plantations we are unable to pay their to pay their wages we are able to pay the bills for the smallholders because we rely on the, on the, the smallholders for their crop to be able to uh, supply all the, their, their crop to produce oil and uh, without them it is very difficult uh, because our target has always been that we should have more crop for small holdings than industrial plantations. Um, the other factor is that we want to start the lobby part of the mill. The lobby part of the mill cannot start when we don't have uh, capital, uh, start of capital, because after the damage which was done in April uh, 2019, uh, when we what I wanted to start, the damage was huge. The factory was vandalized, our installations were, uh, were damaged, so we need to inject a lot of money there to be able to. And we were counting so much on our resources which, uh, which are held in the Ministry of uh, Plan, uh, because uh, we, on instructions of the, the, the Prime Ministry, we carried out some operations on the phase two of the development projects in the Bakasi area. The Bakasi development, oil power development uh, program, where it was intended to occupy this area, use this, this plantation to occupy the area and populate the place with more Cameroonians than before. Uh, unfortunately, this job was done, was received, was, uh, there, there was a joint commission, we came and received the work which was done, and uh, all the necessary documentations were done for this money to be reimbursed as it was stated as a, as a pro and promised by the, uh, by the Prime Minister at the time. But this is, we are in 2020. Since 2016, this project, this money has not, or the, the, the program, I don't, I don't know how to call it, has not moved from the Ministry of Plan to Ministry of Finance to be able to pay this money. And that's what we've been struggling for, for reasons we cannot understand. We've done everything possible. The, the presidency has written for this money to be paid. The prime minister has written for the money to be paid. But... The file is blocked at the Ministry of, of Economy, of, of, Planning of, of, and Regional yes, Development. It's still blocked there. We cannot understand why. I don't, we don't know. But just so uh, it is uh, above the imagination. Majesty Mekanya Okon Charles, general manager of Pamo Plantations, speaking there to the inside. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye.